Welcome to Alpine Basin Edge, Colorado's premier ski tuning, board tuning, and race shop. Today, we're going to give you some helpful hints on ski waxing. We're in the shop, we have a pair of skis on the bench, and we're going to teach you how to wax your skis today. It's a pretty simple process, but there are a couple steps you got to take uh, before you wax your skis and after you wax your skis. So, the very first thing you want to do is make sure your edges are smooth and there's no burrs on them. If you have burrs on your edges, you're going to transfer those burrs to the bottom of your iron. You'll scrape your iron, and then when you wax your skis, you'll transfer those scratches right back onto your base again. The way you can take those burrs off is with a shop stone. Very simply, run the stone over the base of the edge, just to get any big burrs off of there. So you can take the shop stone, Hold it like you would a harmonica, press it against the edge, take the burrs off the base edge of the ski, and then off of the side edge of the ski. Don't worry about your edge angles at this point, the stone won't change the angle of your edges at all. We're just smoothing the edge out. I'm getting any of those rough patches off the edge. You can feel it with your fingers, it's nice and smooth. And then we're going to uh, clean the base before we wax. When you're cleaning the base of your ski, you want to use a good wax remover made by Toco. Swix makes some. Um, there's some other brands out there. But please don't use gasoline, acetone, or kerosene or anything like that to clean your ski base. Those, those products will damage your ski base. And they're also extremely flammable. And uh, they're not very gentle to the P-Tex. A good quality wax remover like Toco makes is gentle to the P-Tex and actually rejuvenates the base and removes all the oils. So, on a pump sprayer, you just pump it up, spray a thin coat on it. I like to use these uh, doobie pads, they're uh, kitchen scrub pads, and after they're not useful in the kitchen anymore, you can use them to scrub out the structure of the ski and get all that oil and dirt off the base. You can use just a rag if you want to, but one of these scrubbies is great. Then you can take a clean rag, wipe the base down, and then let the base dry for a few minutes and let the, the, any excess wax remover evaporate off the base before you start waxing. In the meantime, you can start heating up your iron. Okay. Our iron is hot. We've heat, we heated the iron up to about 130 degrees uh, centigrade. And that's a good temperature for especially the wax that I'm using today, using a molybdenum graphite and um, warm hydrocarbon mix, 50-50 mix. And uh, we're going to melt this onto the ski, and then we're going to smooth it out. Waxing isn't difficult, but you have to do it right. Start at the tip of your ski. Place the iron over your ski base, and you can just touch it if you want to, but it's best not to touch the iron tip to the base as you're running the wax on. You want to drip a bead of wax down one side, and then up the other side. And then just take the wax off and let the rest of the wax that's on the iron drip onto the base. It's a good thing to keep your wax up off the table and off the dirt away from all the filings and shavings that are on your bench. And when you're ironing, it's really important to make single passes at a good consistent speed down the ski. Don't go back and forth like this. You can do that a little bit at the tip to push the wax up to the tip. You can do it a little bit at the tail to push the wax to the tail. But I don't like to see people waxing like this because what they're doing is overheating that section of the ski. And if you overheat your ski, you're going to overheat the core and you risk delaminating the ski or delaminating the base from the edge flange. You can always tell if your ski is too hot, just put your hand underneath the tip. If you can feel a lot of excess heat, you've gotten too hot and you need to let your ski cool down. So I'm going to push the wax up to the tip and then with a nice even flow. Now I might not get a full spread across the whole ski on the first pass. That's okay, because you're going to take a second pass anyway. I'm going to push it to the tail. And again, 
I want to push the iron at a speed such that there's about a three or four inch glaze of wax behind the iron. About that fast. If I have some sections that haven't covered from edge to edge, I can go back over those just in a single pass. I'm going to feel my tip, feel the tail. It's nice and cool. Let the iron do the work. You don't need to press very hard, but you don't want to be too gentle on your pressure. But you want to let the iron do its job. If you go just the right speed, it'll help spread that wax all over the ski. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let this ski cool a little bit, and then we're going to scrape the wax off the edges. So we'll come right back in, in a few minutes when this is cool. You want to let your ski cool down at least 15 minutes after you've waxed it. Um, the reason is, if you don't, you're going to be removing the wax before it's had a chance to penetrate into the polyethylene or PTEX material. 